Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Broly Love in the District. Tristan here along with Jacob. Jacob, you want to go ahead and tell them what we're getting into today? So I'm going to talk about the Cowboys game in the NFL, and we're going to talk about how Washington has somehow obtained a lot of cases of COVID. We have over 20 cases of COVID, so 20 players out and 12 players out with injuries. And then going on to the NHL, um, the Flyers actually have a winning streak now of three games. And um, on the Caps news, we're still playing great. Ovi just overtook Connor McDavid for points. And on into the MOB, since we are still in a lockdown, we're going to be doing the um, all-time Phillies team. So let's get, get right into it. Yeah, so uh, talk about the Washington game first. And I didn't realize that you guys almost came back. I thought the final score was 27-7 because I saw that touchdown from Sims, which is, was an amazing catch. Yeah, but, uh, considering how bad our team had played in the first half and um, how many injuries we have, it's not a horrible game. Our offensive line played like shit. I, I'll, I will admit that. And we probably could have tied the game because on a second and three, Kyle Allen made an actually very nice pass to um, DeAndre Carter, I believe. It hit him right in the hands and he dropped it. But our defense actually played pretty well after the um, halftime break. Dak played a horrible game considering what we are. So yeah, I'm, I'm still mad at the game, but I'm not mad as I was in the first half. Dak Prescott had a whopping 9.9 QB rating against Washington, which is not stellar, clearly. That's I mean, that's all. Yeah. So, I mean, especially with like, yeah, the defense has been stepping up, but the way that the Cowboys were overtaking the game at the beginning they he definitely should have had a higher qbr like that surprised me and considering how streaky our secondary has been he should have done better yeah so i mean that's and then did john allen play in the last game or was it afterwards that he got taken out i don't remember because i do i think it was after the cowboys game that he got put on COVID ir because uh that's, I mean, John Allen has been huge for Washington as of late. Yeah, but and, kind of he played like crap. Even he did get two injuries though, so I'm not gonna blame him for that. Um, his elbow was hurting him, and he messed up his ankle. But our offensive line was playing terrible. We couldn't get the run game going, and Micah Parsons was throwing a wrench in the works and bullet in the batter. I'm, I'm worried about this team. I am trying to pull up. Let's see. Our this is list. backup quarterback Kyle Allen was one of seven players of Washington added to the COVID-19 list. Uh, Matt Iodinus, Cam Sims were added. Uh, and then a group of all-stars that were already in there. John Allen, Kendall Fuller, Montez Sweat. Of 18 total players on the COVID-19 list, only one player, cornerback Daryl Roberts, has been activated. Yeah, and we have 12 players on our injured list. We only have two healthy tight ends on our roster, which is Ricky Seals jones and John Bates. Yeah, Kenneth uh, was on that list. Sam Cosme's designated to return to practice. He's the only player that's looking to be back and McClellan and McKissick are on concussion protocols so we're definitely not going to win the Eagles game I mean if we do I'm going to be infinitely shocked but it says uh Heineke's on track to start against the Eagles yeah but will his elbow be 100% because it was really bothering him in the Dallas game he I said don't... he says I feel good just a little banged up and a little sore that's what he told told local media um Doubtful he'll be a hundred percent. He don't said, we'll but I good. feel good. Should be fine on Sunday. I felt good today at practice, so everything is pretty smooth sailing right now. But he wouldn't say, "Oh man, I feel like crap." Yeah, he he wouldn't. I don't think he would. I mean, you don't do that. You as don't a say that. Yeah. So you guys are going into this game with a very depleted roster. Uh, I mean, this is if Heineke gets hurt. I generally don't know who we put it. We, who we would put a quarterback. I really uh, don't. But with the Washington win, 
with the Washington win, they have, they officially eliminated the Eagles from winning the division. So now the only way the Eagles get into the playoffs is a wild card, which is still very plausible. I mean, the it's kind of a whack uh, whack lineup right now. But uh, yeah, the only way they get in as a is a is a I can't even think of the word is a wild card. Uh, and the Cowboys could potentially lock up the division this week. So that's kind of something to look out for, which, I mean, I think we knew from the start that Dallas was going to win the division. Uh, but I'm trying to pull up the – I'm trying to pull up the standings or the playoff picture. There we go. They give me – oh, they do give me the uh, – okay, so as of right now, the the Packers are in the first seed, then the Bucks, Cardinals, the Cowboys, which the Cowboys are – oh, they're actually right in the mix. They're nine and four. I didn't realize that they were uh, that high up. I thought they had a worse record. But uh, they still could potentially get a first round by. I doubt it will happen, though. Uh, and then the Rams, who are 99%, in my opinion, to make the uh, make a wild card, barring something unforeseen. Uh, and then this is where it gets interesting. The 49ers are 7-6. and six, And then after that, you got Washington, the Vikings, the Eagles, the Falcons, and the Saints all at 6-7 and seven in the hunt. And then the Seahawks and Carolina both at having very outside shots at making the playoffs at five and eight. Uh, so the Eagles, in order for them to make it, they would obviously have to beat Washington. So what I actually think here is, uh, I think what might actually help here is the fact that the Washington so banged up. I need to see. Do you know off the top of your head if the, the game this week is in Washington or Philly? I don't know. Um, I, I don't remember right off the top of my head. Uh, oh, it's in Philadelphia. Yeah, it's in Philly. Which is not ideal because I would much rather have you guys banged up while we're playing in Washington, even though Washington is a second home to every team in the NFC East. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, that's huge having you guys banged up because that puts us one game closer because with that Giants loss, that makes it harder to make it with a Washington loss because I don't see the Eagles beating Dallas unless they don't have any reason to play in week 18 to play their starters, in which case we could win. But other than that, I don't see it happening. Uh, but Something that's kind of interesting from the Eagles standpoint going into this game is right now Gardner Minshew and Jalen Hurts are splitting starting reps. Oh my it's, that controversy. It's not no, it's not because of that. It's because Jalen Hurts has an ankle sprain from playing the Giants, so he's still not 110%. So they uh they've been they've been swapping starting reps. Uh just to make sure if Gardner Minshew does end up needing to start because Jalen Hurts can't go, then he has some more experience with the receivers. Because, I mean, when they were playing – who were they playing? Oh, when they were playing the Jets, you could see he only really had – he really only threw the ball to uh, Dallas Goddard. I think Devontae Smith had three targets, so he's not quite fond of the uh, – of the – starting receivers yet so but honestly I hope Jalen Hurts plays because if Gardner Minshew comes out and beats Washington that I think could make more of an issue than him just beating the Jets I think Gardner Minshew is the feature of your franchise no he doesn't have the he doesn't have the arm strength that's his neither does Heineke huh Heineke doesn't have arm strength yeah, and Heineke isn't a permanent starter. He didn't start the season at quarterback for you guys. It was Ryan Fitzmagic. Yeah, that 
lasted like two drives, maybe. The Eagles are nine and a half point favorites over Washington. Oh my god! Wow, that's that is absurd. I, I don't know if the Eagles have ever been nine and a half point favorites over anyone. You are now. Because I think they were only seven point favorites over the Jets. Uh, so, and the Eagles offense, honestly, if Jalen Hurts does start, I think this game is pretty much a wash. I think this game is a wash to begin with because half of your team is gone. It's really going to yeah, come down to Sunday. Huh? This is going to be an ugly game. It's basically going to come down to Sunday. This is going to be like playing the Jets again. Uh, so that's, that's going to be fun. Eagles are going to run all over Washington, in my opinion. It's really not going to be a game. I, I, I give it. I don't think you're going to be good enough to like blow us out, but you're going to win. I can't see you completely blowing us out because because we still have some pieces. It's not a lot. I say 31-17 Eagles. Well, the thing is about you guys, your run is the integral part of your game, and that's the best part of our defense, even with, like, the so amount of it, So was it for the Saints. The it's Saints so, had the, Saints the number one run team. defense in the league, and they still ran for over 200 yards on them. I still don't think it's going to be – I don't think it's going to be 31-7. I think it's going to be 21-10. I said 31-17. Oh, I still don't think – I still don't think it's going to be – I don't. you're not scoring 31 points. Really? It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be 21-10. They scored 40 on a Saints defense, which – granted, the Saints team is not great. It's still a the good Saints defense. Are, the, Saints, that's, the Saints are done as a team. Like – uh, and who would, who would want to stay there? Huh? Who would want to stay at the Saints? They're they done as a franchise. Saints? They're, I think they're done as a franchise. I think they need a better they're quarterback. Be, they're not going to be good for a while. I, I mean, the core of their team is still there. They still have Alvin Kamara. They still have Michael Thomas. I mean, those are really. And Mike, Michael Thomas can't stay healthy. Their offensive line isn't giving Alvin they, Kamara any favors, and their defense is not playing well because you guys scored 40 points on them. I mean, I think it'll – I don't think they'll be terrible. But, uh, yeah, back to this game. The Eagles have the number one rushing offense in the league. It's – and you guys are so depleted at every position now, especially on defense – I just don't see any way where you'll be able to stop the run. I think Miles Sanders is rushing for another 100-yard game in this one. Uh, so I, I still don't think that because, yes, we're de- yes, we've been depleted, but we limited the Cowboys. Their rushing didn't do that great. The best part of our defense is our run D. Ezekiel Elliott has fallen Since off. We limited the Raiders. We took out the Seahawks. Okay. The – the uh, Ezekiel Elliott has been off this season. Like Tony Pollard has taken over more the last than. two years. Yeah, so I mean Tony Pollard has really taken over the job in Dallas, in my opinion. So I mean he's I can't really agree with you in them saying that uh, in you saying that they stopped the Dallas rushing offense because Ezekiel Elliott hasn't been playing amazingly. He has been playing amazing, but he's still a good running back. I can agree there. But overall, I still think the Eagles are going to be able to rush on Dallas pretty easily. On Dallas? Or Washington. Or playing Dallas. Or Washington. I mean, if it's any consolation, take a flash forward there. I think they'll be able to run on Dallas easily, too, if they actually run the ball this time. Tristan, no, you're not. Stop it. Be realistic. (laughs) Michael Parsons yeah. is going to whoop y'all. Stop That's that. one player against a five-man O-line, which is the best O-line in football right now. Our offensive line has been playing it pretty good this year. We got worked by their defense. We got yeah. worked, isn't, Tristan. Isn't your we offensive line – like, Isn't the offensive line right now a bunch of, like, third stringers? 
with injuries and everything. So is yours, Tristan. No, it's not. Yeah, Tristan, yours is a bunch of third stringers who no, played last Lane year. Lane Johnson is, is all time is a perennial all pro. Uh, he's old. Jason Kelsey, a perennial all pro. He's going to leave. It, but we're know. talking about th- right now. We're talking about right now this year. In a yeah, right but Tristan, first, you aren't you are not gonna be able to run on Dallas. You just aren't. That's because they're gonna be sitting, they're gonna be sitting on the run because we know if Hertz is playing, he ain't gonna pass the ball. We know that. The, I mean, after the last time they played Dallas and ran the ball three times that uh and saw what Jalen Hurts did throwing the ball, they might run the ball now. Yeah, they might run the ball now, and Dallas will know that. I don't think that'll be the case, but uh, that's still three weeks. Well, Tristan, now. your bread and butter is the run game. If Dallas has half, if their coaching staff has half a brain on their heads, they're going to scheme for the run. Dude, they're going to run actions. Don't you think the last like four teams have schemed for the run, and the Eagles have still rushed for? Okay, I who the last four yards teams in every single one of those they, games? Okay, Tristan, the last four teams you've played have been the Jets, the Giants, the Saints, and the Broncos. None of those teams you can say are particularly good. Hang on. I'm and don't up. give me – I'm No, yeah, but Tristan, you're, saying, you, you're saying if a you team knows to that the they'll Giants. scheme for it. Yes. Where's... The Jets are not a good team. Gardner Minshew passed all over them, and Miles Sanders – ran all over them they you aren't a good still, team the same, you can still scheme team. for you can still scheme for some for a team and what they plan to do yeah you can still scheme but i just don't think you'll be good enough to be able to run all over dallas we tried to run all over dallas and it didn't work they they stopped us at pretty much really? every juncture we could barely get any yards so against the jets they rushed for 185 yards it's the Jets, Tristan. Then you lost to the Giants. The Giants, they still rushed for 208 yards. Uh, the Against the Saints, they rushed for – oh, that's the wrong team. They rushed for over 200, I against, believe. Oh, yeah, against the Saints, they rushed for 242, which was the number one rushing defense at that point in time. Just saying. Uh, against the Broncos, which oh, doesn't have exactly a stud of a front seven. Against the Broncos, they, they don't have a stud of a team. 216 yards. Against the Chargers, which is where I think they started to find the run game, if I do recall correctly. Uh, against the Chargers, they rushed for 176 yards. And actually, my Tristan, been... only one of those one of those teams you can only one of those teams you can say has a good rushing defense, and that's the Saints. But yeah, up to the Chargers, they have terrible. They just fell off a cliff. The Chargers, their defense isn't that great. No, the Chargers, their their rushing defense, their front seven isn't good. That's. But my point is, you're saying they rushed for 230 against the Lions. So after once you get about bad. the third. Once you get to about the third week is when you start planning, like you start scheming for stuff. So after the first two or three weeks. None of those teams have been good. If you still, and they still, they rushed for 135 yards against the Raiders, which isn't great. Still better than what they did through the first six weeks. Uh, Still better, but I'm saying none of those teams you can say are really great teams. Yes, some of them have are decent in some areas but i just don't think if that you, you've played a very well a good defense i just think michael parsons and their their defense is going to be able to shut it down enough to the point where you either have to force your quarterback in a tough throwing situation or your offense is going to be taken out of the game entirely last time the eagles played the played michael parsons and started running the ball miles sanders ran two rushes for 13 and a half yards on each of them. So I mean they that they didn't that was that was a small that was a small uh it's a small sample, small sample size. size. So you can't exactly go off of that. But my point here is you're saying they won't be able to run because they'll scheme against it. 
all these yeah, teams that we have more played towards against it, but Tristan, Tristan all these Tristan, all these teams Tristan. we've played since week eight Those other have teams had the chance. Good. It doesn't it doesn't matter how good yes, you are not- if you put if you put nine players in the box to stop the run, your running back is not running through nine players unless you have a good offensive line and a good running back. You so you can scheme against a team and unless uh. So, like, our offensive line has proved that they're good, that they can obviously run through things. They're the first rushing offense in the league. I mean, what what else do you ex- – what what more do you want to prove that they're a good rushing offense and that they can rush over – They're a the good league? rushing offense, but the Cowboys have been able to shut down good rushing offenses. Our top – for Washington, the top, the top of our offense was rushing, and we couldn't do anything. Again, we cannot do a single isn't, thing. Isn't your offensive line absolutely depleted right now? Our offensive line at that point was good, and they've been playing amazing, Tristan. It's depleted right. now after the game because we got a million COVID cases, but at that <laughs> point, it was still decent. All right. I want to see. They were able to shut down our running game. It felt like we couldn't even get like three yards on a play. The only team that I'm really seeing here so far, I haven't gone through the entire uh, thing. The only good rushing team that I see that they have, the Cowboys have played is the Broncos, which they ran for 190 on. Oh, here, the Vikings with Dalvin Cook. Uh, he ran for, hang on, give me a sec. They only ran for 100 yards, the Cowboys did against the Vikings. Uh, the Patriots, who are the number two rushing offense in the league. Yeah, the Patriots, that's all they do. Yeah. Uh, They ran for 120 yards. So I can give you that. They are shutting down rushing offenses a bit, but they've only played two really good rushing attacks in uh, the Patriots and the Broncos. Because, I mean, the other teams they've played is the same. Cowboys, yeah which they didn't have Alvin Kamara when they played the Saints. So you can't – I don't think they did. I can double-check that. Yeah, they didn't have Alvin Kamara when they played the Saints. Um, Washington, I guess you could say that. But, um, yeah, they held you guys to 100 yards. So I'll give you three teams. I'll give you three teams. I will give you Washington, the Broncos, and the Vikings. Or – Washington Broncos, Vikings, and Patriots. Four of their 13 games. I will give you that they played um they played four good rushing teams and the Broncos still smoked them for 200 yards. I will give you that. But like I said, that's still in the future. Right now we're focusing on this Washington game, which I don't think we really need to focus on much more because we really don't. We know it's gonna happen, but I think it's pretty obvious what's gonna happen here. Uh you have Wait, I want to pause that. Oh, pause, pause. Uh, I'm looking here at the game preview picks on NFL of like the different uh, of all the different anal- analysts and what they're saying. You have one one of ten analysts saying you guys are going to win, nineteen to seventeen. Every other every other analyst says the Eagles. Uh. But yeah, I mean that's that's coming up on Sunday. I don't really think there's much more to talk about. The unless I'm probably gonna have, turn off the game. I was gonna say unless you guys have some sort of like miracle with your COVID cases where they start to come back, I don't see this going in a good way for Washington. And who knows? Maybe I mean, maybe the Eagles will let Jalen Hurts if he plays throw the ball a little bit more to get a little bit more comfortable. So, I mean, there's... But, but we there's, saw that against... Who was the team we threw three interceptions against? The Giants. Yeah, the Giants, they aren't a good team at all. And he still threw three picks against the Giants. It was stink. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. But uh, we scored our season high points against them. I'm pretty sure. Our season high was against the Saints with 40. Yeah, our season high was 30, I believe, against the Giants. Don't quote me on that. Would you take would you take the spread? Uh nine and a half point favorites for the Eagles. Would you take that? Yeah. You would. Mm-hmm. Um for people who don't understand betting, that's either 
So either the Eagles win by nine, well, nine, 10 in this case. So the Eagles win by 10, you would get your bet back if you didn't make a bet. Um, or if Washington loses by nine or less or wins the game, then that's that's how that all works. But yeah, I, I would take the spread. I think we're gonna lose huh? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I would think we're going to lose by 11. What did I say? I said 14, 30 to 17. So, I mean, that's – I would take that too. Uh, let's go over to hockey. And this one is a bit – I think it's a little more better. I, actually, yeah. I mean, I'm looking up a little bit more since last time we talked because the last time we talked, the Flyers hadn't had a win in, I want to say, three weeks. So, they have now finally broken the 10-game win streak, and they are now on a three-game winning streak. Uh, they've moved up and hopped the Devils. They are now 26 – or, yeah, 26. They have 26 points for six in the division, uh, which, I mean, I think they – I think they're starting to win at just the right time because they have a bunch of semi easy teams coming up. So, uh, cause like listen to the teams that they did beat. So they beat Vegas four to three, which is a good team, which started or ended their losing streak. And then they had Arizona right after that, who they won five to three. And then they just smoked a da- or New Jersey, six to one with Kim Atkinson getting a hat trick. So I think they're starting to win and get confidence at just the right time as they have the Canadians next and then the senators. And then they have uh, the caps and Pittsburgh. And then after that, Seattle, San Jose, the Kings, um, Anaheim. So they have a pretty, a semi easy schedule coming up except for the caps and Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh and Philadelphia is always a gritty. Playing, they, they're on a five game win streak. Right? Playing. Yeah. They so, beat us. Yeah, they're playing amazingly right now. Uh so hopefully they can step up on that. But uh yeah, since Mike Yo has stepped in, the power play has done better. You can see more confidence in the team. Uh the goalies can start to perform a little bit better because their team is playing in front of them better. So, I mean, you can see the confidence coming back to the Flyers as they're finally starting to win games, which is huge yeah. for the team. On the confidence cast, is everything. We've been playing still pretty good. We have a relatively easy stretch of games coming up. The Jets, I, they're a good team. Um, the Kings aren't. The Flyers, I think we can win that. The Islanders have not been playing great this season. Senators aren't that great. Predators aren't. Red Wings could be a difficult game. The Devils now, but I think the Caps Flyers game. Want... I think the Caps Flyers huh? game could be a good game because I it mean, could be a good game. But I that think point, that's the a Flyers. Game that we have to lose more than you have to win. I think the uh, Flyers could be could be riding a five game winning streak up to that po- point. They, they have, could be, but they have like Montreal the Senators. The the teams isn't that high. What? But yeah, the quality. Like you could be riding a team. Yeah, the quality of teams is a little. But I mean, they're at least building confidence. They're building confidence. Through. Yeah. I. Uh, it's kind of hard to do worse than you were before, especially with your power play. But yeah, you've been doing better. The. Uh, which is, it's good considering how bad you guys have got were. Yeah. I, so I was listening to this podcast, and he was going over the, uh, the like the opposing teams that the Flyers are playing in the month of uh, in this month. And he said through 80 games, they would have 57 points. I want to say they would have 24, 24 wins. I don't remember what it was off the top of my head, but they have, they would have 24 wins. Which, so about 24 wins, nine overtime losses. I can't think of how many losses that would be off the top of my head, but uh, they, they would have a combined 57 points. And the last time a full season was played, they the lowest amount of points was 67. So even if you gave them the benefit of the doubt and said through those other two games, they got wins in those, like just presumably if all those teams made a team, they would still only have 61 points, which would not be uh, not be what they the last time they played a full. So 24, 47, and 9 
was the was their combined record. And most of those wins were coming from Washington and Pittsburgh as their seven they have 17 wins and 15 wins respectively. So yeah, um on the caps, I think we can actually start stepping up our form because um Nick Backstrom finally came back, even though we did lose a game in Chicago, we actually, it was actually a good effort. We scored a goal with three seconds left to take it to overtime. Um, and we ended up getting a point, but Alex Ovechkin scored a power play goal last night, which ties him with Dave Anderchuk for number one all time in power play goals. So oh, we'll, that see, we'll see him breaking down another record here soon. Well, so first off, that was actually for the Devils, Montreal, and Ottawa. Their combined record was 24, 47, and 9, which was 51 points. I apologize, not Washington and Pittsburgh also. But uh, also on top of that, when the Flyers were playing Arizona, I believe, uh, Claude Giroux converted on another power play to get to take the all-time Flyers lead in power play points passing bobby clark and i mean that's some pretty good company to be along with bobby yeah. clark and bill barber so i mean he passes passes them and he's now number one all time on flyers franchise for power play points yeah i will freely admit about this caps team they're surprising me i thought we had reached the shelf life of this I think, team i think they surprised everyone because they definitely surprised yeah. me like we're an old team. I didn't expect our rookies to step up and play as good as they have been. Our goalies have been, they could be better, but I still think they're playing decent enough. But yeah, I thought this team had reached its shelf life and I thought that we'd start to go downhill, but Hey, they're proving me wrong. And we're like consistently in the top five of the power rankings, which is very surprising to me. And shout out to guys like Kuzi have, who really been stepping things up because I was one of his biggest detractors in the preseason. So yeah, they're surprising me. Uh, this is now the time for like, for a couple flyers to start taking heat going into this little stretch because uh, James Van Riemsdyk has three goals since December 10th. Cam Atkinson had a hat trick against the devils and he was, cooling down a little bit so now maybe he's going to start heating up a bit Travis Konechny has been putting up points so hopefully like some of those big players are going to start putting up points hopefully uh finally putting together a team that should be winning a lot more than they are you, uh you've seen Rasmus Ristolainen score a couple points which was something you wanted to see from him earlier in the season because he's got a big shot so you have him at the back with James Van Riemsdyk to tip some net tip some pucks in front i mean that's that's yeah, something and, you want to look for because james Van Ryan, and, like he's one of the best you're gonna the want business. sorry oh okay. i was just saying james van reamsdyke is one of the best in the business with tipping pucks in front i don't know how he does it he's oh, so yeah. good at it though we tried it it's not gone well but i was saying with wrist line and you're really wanting points because he isn't the most defensive defenseman we've seen lapses over and over again and he's actually playing really good defensively he had six hits against uh i want to say it was six hits against vegas i believe that's pretty good but he's still not the most defensively sound um defenseman and you're going to want points out of him to kind of offset some I of the miss he's more of a two-way yeah which around. is why which is why he's paired with uh travis sanheim because they're both kind of two-way because uh but i mean risk Ristolainen isn't an analytics darling either. No, so you, you kind of want to, he kind of sits in the Rasmus Darlene. The Rasmus is just analytics hate him. They, dude, they had the Rasmus line in uh, Buffalo. Yeah. And they played like crap. Uh, but I mean, he's starting to play a little bit more defensively sound. Uh, and so he's coming back a little bit. Uh, but yeah, he's, he just, the way he explained it, he wants to, he wants people to hate him on the ice. He just wants to lay the body, make people hate him, and just hit people and just be annoying is the way he uh, he worded it. Yeah, and make sure, like, Brad Marchand and Tom Wilson, essentially. Except not as, uh, not as cheap and not as much of a pain in the butt. Yeah, as those two can be at, at times. Uh, can be? What do you mean? <laughs> Wilson has been, actually, Wilson's been playing a lot more um clean recently. Um, it, I'm not going wood. 
Wilson and Marchand are the two most hated players in the NHL. Yeah, but we I can admit this as a fan. (laughs) Everybody would love to have one of those players on their team because guys like that are extremely rare. Yeah, because they both put up points. Yeah, and Wilson's like a big power forward that you don't really see a lot, and Marshawn is he's he's a rat he's a rat that's how you describe him but he do you, he's a hundred point scorer do you think any anyone on the capitals um will make their uh teams for uh like make their country teams um ovi and koozie um i think oshi could make the u.s um, Backstrom for Sweden if he's healthy enough. Did you say Wilson for the U.S.? No, I said Oshi. Oh, Oshi. Yeah, Wilson possibly could if the U.S. doesn't really have. I I don't have, know because the U.S. could potentially have one of the better teams. Yeah, like, but they have the 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 the, the Chuck. The, I cannot say their name. The Chuck brothers. Yeah, Kachuk brothers who were like Wilson, but not as physical. They're both power forward. So I don't know if there's a need for Wilson, but it's not out of the realm of possibilities. Uh, hang on one sec. I'm trying to pull up. This was from TSN. I'm trying to pull up their uh, their projections for John Carlson. Oh, Carlson. He's Carlson gonna... will make the American team. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, let's see. I want to pull up the TSN predictions for their America and America Sam, and Canada teams. Sam Sonoff possibly. Eller's car stores makes reserving a new vehicle really. Easy. Uh, yeah. um, Lars Eller will probably make Denmark's team because Denmark isn't a good. Yeah, they're not a good hockey team. I can't find. Oh, here they are. All right. So the U.S. roster projections Kyle Connor, Austin Matthews, Patrick Kane, Johnny Gaudreau, Jack Eichel, Alex DeBrinkett, Max Pacioretty, uh, Dylan Larkin, Joe Pavelski, the Kachuk brothers, and Jack Hughes, and then Gensel and JT Miller. And then on defense, you got Jacob Slavin, Adam Fox. Adam Fox is playing at Norris Trophy pace again. He's definitely going to make it. He's been insane. Quinn Hughes, uh, McAvoy, McDonough, John Carlson, Seth Jones, and Jeff Petrie. And then in, uh, in goal, you got Connor Hellebuck, Gibbs, John Gibson, and Thatcher Demko. So that is TSN's projections for Team USA. The only I could see, I think you have, you could have potential of Claude Giroux, Sean Couturier, and Carter Hart making Canada's team. I don't think any of the Americans for the Flyers will make the American team, unfortunately. Um, Risto will probably be on the Swedish team. I want to say he's Swedish. Uh, but I mean, that's really the caps we could actually have a decent amount because company Manichek will probably make the czech republic team eller for denmark oshi and carlson could make it for the u.s i think uh and then i think ivan Provorov will be on the russian team i mean that's kind of a no-brainer uh um but that's really all i have in mind uh it's all I could really see. If Claude Giroux keeps on playing the way he is, I think he'll make the Canada team. He could, but I don't think he will. So, uh, I, I don't think he will either because he's kind of getting up there in age. So, he's kind of like – he's kind of falling off the – he's always been like an under-the-radar guy, in my opinion. Well, that that's also down to a little bit to you. Always you, – you guys really haven't had the best of goal scorers around him. Like you, has he ever been paired with a 40 goal scorer? I don't think so. Uh, well, he now is with Cam Atkinson. Cam Atkinson is 
Yeah, but who scored 40 goals while he was on the Flyers, not with another team. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think he's had any yeah, 40 no. goal scorers next to him. Aside from, like, I don't think he's at, been the assist guy to a 40 goal score. No. Because, I mean, he's always been with, like, Voracek and Couturier, who are not really big goal scorers. They're more like players who are – Voracek like, would have been the split biggest. Split their goals and assists, and like their goals are really scrappy and not the most pretty. Yeah. So I mean, he yeah, he's never really been paired. He's kind of under the radar for a. Uh... Okay, that's cool. Um, he's always been an under the radar guy, in my opinion. But I mean, he's a top five Philadelphia athlete of all time. Put definitely a top three Flyers athlete of all time potentially top five athlete in all of Philadelphia. I'm going to bring up here, Philadelphia. I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. It, like Drew being a top five Philadelphia athlete. You don't think he'd be a top five Philadelphia athlete? Are we talking about players who played for Philadelphia or who are from Philadelphia? No, no, no. I mean like who played for Philadelphia. Okay, so that like, leaves obviously boxers. You you got like you got like Dr. Mike Schmidt in there. Um, you have to have Dr. J, Allen Iverson, Mike Schmidt. Um, you could probably add Steve Carlton in there because uh, Bobby I, Clark has got to be in. Got to be in there. Yeah, I don't, I can't see where he where that's, Drew that's makes it. Like maybe five. it's he'd probably be just outside or at least top ten. Yeah, that's I think he's definitely worth. top ten, potentially a top five. Yeah, but if you we were including like boxers, yeah, he wouldn't crack top ten. Yeah, no, that's why I said uh like I no, played like, for it. Played for Philadelphia. Uh the um in uh, seven hundred and twenty seven games, Jacob Voracek had one hundred and seventy seven goals, and I want to say that is his like biggest goal scorer uh, to play with him. He played a little bit with uh, with Simone Gagne, but he wasn't on a line with him. He was uh, because Danny Breer was on the line with with Simone Gagne, so he wasn't wasn't great there. Uh, Sean Couturier has 180 goals with the Flyers in 719 games. So yeah, he hasn't really had the like. The type of players he was he was playing with on the Flyers are like Yuri Laterra and uh like I, I can't even yeah even though you did make it to a Stanley Cup that team really wasn't the most yeah, but no but that was that power. was in 2010 that was in 2010 yeah. where the team was good because you had Danny Briere uh Mike Knubel Simone Gagne Claude Giroux is coming I mean like they... all those players are still like they like they aren't really the highest goal scorers. When they score a lot of points, they're typically evenly spread out between their goals and assists. You can't really say you have a high octane score on that team. Simone, Simone Gagne was the last high octane goal scorer for the Flyers. And that was back in 2010. Yes, he, that was 2015. Or no, not 2015. He retired in 2015. Yeah. Uh, but the last time he scored like he 40 scored goals in 08 09. He scored 264 oh, no. with, uh, oh, with six, the Flyers. Yeah, the last 40 goal score for Philadelphia, I think, was 07, 06. No, 08, 09. Oh, wait, no, that's 40 assists, my bad. Yeah, I, I made the same mistake. Yeah, but Ghani, he had 41 in 06, 07. And 47 the year before that. Mm -hmm. And he, so he was the last, like, pure sniper goal scorer that the Flyers had. Yeah, but even then, Drew was relatively young Drew, at that point so Drew he wasn't playing on the was, team in 06 07 yeah so <laughs> he was, he was never a rookie been with really the highest of caliber players yeah he was a rookie in 09 2010 so yeah he he's never really played and that's like that's saying something the numbers that he puts up with the lack of uh depth that he's been playing with is insane that's why i think he's definitely a top 10 athlete in philadelphia maybe even a top five I, I don't think he's actually top 10 looking back on it because Will Chamberlain, Chamberlain played for the Philadelphia Warriors back in the day. Um, so I don't think he would make it 
into the top 10 Philly athletes who played for Philadelphia. I think Bill Barber has to be in the top 10. Yeah, Bill Barber. Brian Dawkins probably has to be up there. Steve Carlton, Dr. J. Maybe maybe that's a discussion for one day. We can go over the uh, top Top 10 10 athletes. Who played for Philadelphia and then played for Washington. Played for Washington would be a lot more difficult. But, like, I would say it has to be for, like, a certain amount of years, like, at least five years. Because, I mean, you don't want to throw in, like, a, like some player who went in for, like, a year and just played a single season there. Yeah, I can't think of – I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head, but I can't. Um, played for – Oh, oh, well, nah. there was a – trying to think of his name. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to have like some guy who came in for one season and just uh, played one one game there and left. Uh, oh, so you want to move on to baseball, mm-hmm. or we'll go yeah. over the Phillies all time lineup and then we'll do the Nationals next week. Nationals slash Nationals slash everyone else or slash else Senators <laughs> that whole lineage. Uh. So I have mine lined up right here. I do, you, do you want me to – how do you want to do it? Do you want to, like, go position by position or just list it all? Yeah, let's position by position. So all right. Where do you want to start? I've, catcher, I have Darren Dalton. Yeah, I have Darren Dalton, too. I mean, Darren Dalton was kind of a no-brainer. Um, yeah. Do you, first off, hang on. Before we even start, do you have any uh, – do you have any current players? Yes, I have one. You do have one? So yeah. the, I could I could see JT Real Muto potentially making that list one day. It'd be hard. Yeah, I just don't think he's there yet. Yeah, considering he's not, Darren Dalton. He's not there yet, but he could he could be. Um Darren Dalton is one of only four catchers in baseball history to lead the league, his league in our RBIs. So that'd be the National League. Um so in Philly's history, Dalton ranks first at catcher in walks on-base percentage, second in home runs, RBIs, and slugging percentage, fourth in doubles, sixth in hits, and he ranks first in B-War with 22.5 and F-War, which is 24.4. And that's in the modern era, which is post-1900. So, I mean, Dalton was kind of a no-brainer. He he had to be up there Uh, for... Do you want to go pitcher next or first baseman? Do you want to do pitcher last? Yeah, let's do pitcher last. All right. So I'll get a first baseman. This one I was stuck between. I was stuck between John Crook and Ryan Howard. I put Ryan Howard. Yeah, ultimately, I did end up going with Ryan Howard. I mean, the run he had for like his prime years were as good as anyone in the league. He had four straight seasons where he was where he ranked top five in MVP voting. And in 2006, he act, he did win. So from 2006 to 2009, he ranked uh, he ranked top five in MVP voting every single one of those years. Yeah, that's he, as good as any first baseman. He went 275 uh, batting average with a 368 on base and a 560 slugging for 928 on base plus slugging. What uh, was his OPS? His OPS 928. Dang. Uh, compiling 189 doubles, 17 triples, and 286 home runs. Ken Griffey Jr. said, I'm not a home run hitter. He's a home run hitter. Like, yeah. that, that's got to be saying something when you're being yeah. – uh, when you're being, If he was able to stay healthy for longer, I think he'd, de- he'd have a really good um, argument for the Hall of Fame. But he, I think, guys, him, he's kind of – comparable to Mark Teixeira where they had Hall of Fame talent but injuries ultimately kind of killed their um argument for the Hall of Fame he he led the majors in homers in 06 and 08 he set the single season home rec- home run record for the Phillies with 58 in 2006 and he paced the majors in RBI in 06 08 and 09 with 149 146 and 145 one respectively I mean he's just there's no nowhere to put it i mean that's that's ultimately why you had to put him over john crook his batting stats were just insane second baseman i have one of the most hated players in his day chase utley oh, people was, 
hated Chase Utley. He's you had to put him at you had yeah. to put him lead him lead him there. I yeah, mean, his run from two thousand six, uh, well, two thousand five to two thousand ten was insane for a first baseman. So from starting Second from two thousand five, yeah, he hit twenty eight homers. 32, 22, 33, 31, and 16. For a second baseman, that's really good. He was able to get on base a lot. High average hitter. And he's, he had four years in a row where he had a, over 100 RBI. For a yeah. second baseman, that's amazing. He was just an all-around talented second baseman. Like The numbers he would put up by himself were just insane. Uh, he, he always ranked top in B-War in his 11 year stretch from 2004 to 14 uh only albert pujos adrian beltre and miguel cabrera or um only albert pujos and adrian beltre were better and miguel cabrera and alex rodriguez rounded the top five so he ranked number three and then he had albert pujos adrian beltre and then miguel cabrera and a rod right around him like that's some pretty good company for Interesting, you're saying it wrong. It's Pujos. Pujos? Yeah, Pujos. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's got to be – he's got to be the uh, the second baseman all the time. Shortstop, this is another note. I mean, most of this team is all, like, from one era, which yeah. I think is just – This guy kinda... won an MVP from a shortstop. That's yeah. quite Jimmy, impressive. It's, it's got to be Jimmy Rollins. Um, He's the all-time hits leader in Philly's history with 2,306. So I think, I mean, he's just another guy where you have to put him up there, especially with the all-time franchise hit leader. Hit 277 with 25 home runs, 83 RBIs, and a lit 811 OPS in 2006. And he won the NL MVP. And then in the following season, he hit 296 with 30 home runs and 94 RBIs and an 875 OPS. Uh, Larry Boa said that Jimmy was a great player. Uh, I mean, Jimmy Rollins is definitely, he's already a Phillies Hall of Famer, potentially a MLB Hall of Famer. Like, I think he's on the cusp. He could make it, but if he doesn't. That, it, yeah, I, yeah, that's. That's why I put potentially in there. He could be, but it might not happen. But I mean, he's hard to say considering some of the guys that have been left out, like Fred McGriff, Bobby Abreu, guys like that who have similar stats. Yeah. Uh, So that's why I, he's got to be the top shortstop. Um, Third baseman. I think we both know who this is. I wonder who this is. Um, Obviously, Mike Schmidt. I'm just going to go over his accolades that, uh, he collected over the years 12 time all-star world series champion a three-time nl mvp a world series mvp a 10-time gold glover a six-time silver slugger eight-time nl home run leader four-time nl rbi leader hit four home runs in one game on april 17th 1976 which is tied for the most in mlb history uh he has his number retired in Philadelphia. He's in the Phil- in the Phillies Wall of Fame, Hall of Fame. Um, he's on the MLB All-Century team and All-Time team, and he was a first ballot Hall of Famer in 1985. So, I That's mean, a genuine argument for the greatest third baseman of all time. That's yeah, a genuine yeah. argument. Yeah, I mean, it is. I, it's, he was putting up numbers. The only person I can think who can truly challenge him, if A-Rod hadn't been steroided up and been on hadn't the juice. them, yeah, he would have been ended up all time better than a rod that's my opinion but since he did i i still put mike schmidt over a rod uh his batting he was 267 batting average with 2234 hits 548 home runs and uh just under 1600 rbis in his career i mean that's yeah like you said uh, borderline all-time greatest third baseman in mlb history let alone uh, just Philly's history. Yeah, and have so you cool. have you ever seen that clip of a uh, of where he like it? The ball doesn't get bunted, but it's a very like soft ground ball, 
uh, right past the pitcher's mound, and it was just out of the pitcher's reach. And Mike Schmidt comes in out of nowhere, just picks it up off the ground, and somehow gets it over to first just before the runner gets there. I've not seen that, but I've seen plays like that done by guys like A Rod and um, Nolan Arenado. Yeah. All right. Um, For go outfield, right? I, I think we should list our three because oh, just outfield position. Down. Yeah. Okay. So I had Bobby Abreu, Richie Ashburn, and your favorite player, Bryce Harper. So I. I didn't want to put a. I didn't. Honorable mention to Jason Worth and Raul Ibanez. Yes, Raul Ibanez. Uh, and Jason Worthless. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're two good names to also put up there. So, uh, I could probably. I'm gonna put. So, for my three, I have Shane Victorino, which I will admit right now that's a little bit on the bias Biased. side toward because of the fact that I did get to see him play a little bit. And so I was a little bit biased towards that. Um, and then I have Bobby Abreu and I could, I did put Sherry McGee, um, Sherry McGee initially, but you could also put Richie Ashburn up there. Those two yeah. are kind of uh, switching and out. And then, Pat Burrell, I think, also has to go up there for uh, potential outfielders up there. I just don't see uh, Bryce Harper being up there yet because of the fact that he's he hasn't really like stepped into his role yet. This was probably he, this was definitely his best season yet as a Philly. But if you remember his first season, he was struggling in the first half he of the season. He, he saw. ended up doing pretty good in the latter. He, he half. He still ended up he, he still ended up with thirty five home runs on that season. Uh, which is what he was signed to do is hit home runs. Um, so but for me, it was same old Bryce's defense was always lacking. He always struck out a lot, even though he did get a lot of um, a decent amount of home runs. But this year this, he did. Um, a, this yeah, this season he was playing amazingly all around. Yeah. But overall, like I just I think he still hasn't quite lived up to his contract. Uh, he's this if he continues playing like he did this year, easily will be up there but yeah. it's um the fact that he still in his first year he definitely struggled which i still think it's that was still a factor of the fact that he's moving from one team to another he has to kind of get used to the get used to the uh like being on a new team and the fact that he was on a new team and like he he got paid so much that's not exactly just an easy thing to walk into and be like yeah like I'm the man. What do you What do you want me to? I'll just do it right off the bat. Like you, you kind of have to live up to that, and you kind of got a lot of pressure on you in that. So I think he was trying to prove his contract a little too much in the first half of his first season. Second half, you finally kind of saw him like settle down and just chill, chillax for a bit. In his second season, that was the shortened season where they went. That was a 30. weird season all yeah, around. They, you can't really blame any players. Yeah, for they went 30 and 30 in that season. I don't really blame anyone on that. That was just an all around odd season. No one really played amazingly that season. So I don't really, can't really count that. Uh, but yeah, this season, he finally actually started to live up to his contract. Won an NL MVP, now has two. One of, I believe, only four active players to have multiple MVPs. So uh, among Mike Trout, Miguel Cabrera, and I want to say Albert Pujols is the other one. Yeah. So, I mean, he's with good company there. Like, it's yeah. – so I, I think uh, he'll end up as your all-time um, – Right The fielder. best Phillies outfielder ever. I still don't, I don't think he'll win a World Series, but I think he'll do really great. I think you can honestly end up being like those really good Tigers teams or the Rays teams. I think you can get there, even though it's going to be quite difficult, but I just don't think you'll be able to win a World yeah. Series. So I don't, that's why I don't think, I was debating putting Harper up there though. I, I was debating it and I was like, overall, he hasn't really like lived up to his, uh, to his. Up until this year. Yeah. Up, up until this year, he hasn't really put up the numbers that he's been expected to. So yeah. that's why I didn't put him up there yet. I put him there because I totally jinxed a home run when the that game we went to, oh I said, anybody was, hit a home run like, for Bryce Harper. You're like, as long as Bryce Harper doesn't hit a home run near you here. And then a reliever comes in and, and the, throws a meatball right down the middle, and Bryce Harper hits it. I knew it right off the bat. We, we were like, 
we were time travelers in that game because right before the leadoff home run, I go, oh, you ready for this Gene, leadoff home run right here from Gene, Gene Segura. First pitch, homer. And you you both looked at me like, what? <laughs> yeah, that was, oh, that was a wild game. That was a good game. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think, like, like I said, I kind of favored Shane Victorino up there a little bit because of the fact that I did get to see him play, so I was a little bit biased there. Although Rishi Ashburn could, um, should be in there, um, but yeah, I I did decide to put him in there. And then Bobby Abreu is one of the guys who kind of went under the radar, in my opinion. Like I, I never really heard of him until I started like really looking into this kind of stuff, and then I was like, oh dang, he actually did put up good numbers. He was a good player, and he won a um, he won a home run derby. He won the home run derby at the Giant Stadium. And- and there's a clip of him hitting a deep home run to left field that is just beautiful to watch. I believe it was the home run derby that was at um, the Giant Stadium. I could be wrong. I know it was that era, but Bobby Breu, I'm kind of surprised he hasn't really gotten a lot of um, attention for the Hall of Fame because you can certainly make the case that he should be a Hall of Famer because he was a he's a gold he won the gold glover a gold glove award 2400 hits 288 home runs a career batting average of 291 almost 1400 rbis 400 stolen bases Just career ops of 870 home yeah a career ops of 870 so there's a genuine um, argument that he could go into the hall of fame uh but yeah he he's another guy that you kind of like you don't really see the recognition there and then for pitcher, I think this is another obvious one where you can't really miss here in Steve Carlton. Steve Carlton. Yeah, I mean. I, I consider Roy Halladay, Cole Hamels, and um, Cliff Lee, but you have to go Steve Carlton. Yeah, I mean, that's – I see a rotation. If we want a full rotation, there's your rotation. Like Roy Halladay. It would be Steve Carlton. Carlton and then your 2018. Yeah. Um, the, so, dude, I mean, that team was honestly like the studs because you could also you could also put Carlos Ruiz in the um, discussion for best Phillies catchers of all time. Uh, so, I mean, you, I don't think only, you could put him number one because his year he didn't have um, his, his years of good play weren't like as prevalent. He his prime wasn't long enough. Yeah. Uh but he uh he's still like in he still could be up there. Like you said, his prime wasn't long enough, yeah. but and also Darren Dalton is to to be in company with Darren Dalton is still pretty um, Dude, that's high praise. Yeah. Uh but yeah, Steve Carlton 3.09 career ERA with the Phillies. Uh which is pretty pretty good, I mean, overall. Because uh, it's just over three, which is kind of like you kind of wish you could get that just under, but um, it is what it is. You get – where is – I'm trying to find – where I can't find his strikeouts. Oh, here they are. 3,000 strikeouts, 3,031 strikeouts over 15 years. That is absurd. And he had a uh, six point six win percentage. So I mean, he's the all time. He's just one of those players where you just know without, uh, where you just know right off the bat when you're talking about it that he's up there. Overall, I think that's where we're going to end it off. There, anything else from you? Yeah, next week is going to be interesting with the whole Nationals lineage. But other than that, I got nothing. Yeah, um, I'm pretty much set there. Uh, yeah, next week's going to be the, the Nationals. Uh, Senators, Expos, Collage. Yeah, but with that, uh, I think we will call it there and – you guys can follow our Instagram at BLM the DC. Uh, you can DM us questions, comments, uh, email us, 
You can email us questions and comments and stuff like that at blmthedc at gmail.com. Uh, you can rate us at, on Apple, uh, where you can also leave stuff like that and reviews and stuff. And uh, with that, we will see you guys next week. See you.